Hello again, viewers. My name is Rod Kowicki. What I wish to do today is to uh, introduce you to a new theory that I have developed. This part of the theory I am going to express today has to do with gravity. Through a 15 year study of advanced physics, I have researched the works of uh, Albert Einstein, the special and general theory of relativity, and everything that evolves around it, Newton, Maxwell, Planck, and through the studies I have uh, developed a new theory which is expressed in my book called the Supertelic Electromagnetic Gravitational Universe Technology Theory. In my book I suggest faster than light speed space travel. Uh, a means to travel faster than light without uh, having to form some exotic energy or use some type of exotic en energy and based on the uh, same principles as Einstein's theory on relativity faster than light speed travel is possible. But today in this part two uh, segment uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about gravity. Gravity explained by well, the first to write a, a, a very good formula for it was uh, Isaac Newton. He expressed to uh, explain the uh, the axis of objects and why things fell to the ground and moved and, and everything for the queen. And uh, he developed the theory on gravity. He measured gravity and ex explains uh, how gravity works and why the planets evolve around the our planet as they do. Uh, one of his uh, laws of gravity is uh, is the law of motion, which he explains uh, how the difference between uh, in indivisible forces affect objects in acceleration. One of these forces is gravity. The gravity in quantum physics, as I'm about to, to explain to you, is a little bit different. It explains the way faster than light speed space travel is possible because of this. An object on the Earth planet's surface sits this uh, stationary because of the effect of gravity on it and because there's no outside interruptions acting on it it will stay stationary due to gravity. Because the object or matter or mass of objects as you might say uh, are held together by a, a mass of elements and a, a force Nucleus, a nuclear force uh, in the atoms. It has a certain amount of energy, a lot of energy, in fact, uh, enough to where if it was uh, tapped into, it would be a, a, a big resource. But because of this. Uh, atomic force, uh, everything, all the atoms stay together and form matter. Different types of matter, different types of sizes, planetary matter, uh, matter, solid matter, gas, but material objects stationary on space are affected due to the planetary core and the elements in our on our inside our planet, which 
create an invisible force called gravity. The object, because it is made up of uh, an infinitesimal energy that holds all its atoms together, is affected by this gravity. Uh, the, the difference I am going to imply tells us of what I call a fabric weight. If we was to eliminate gravity, like uh, the medium of interstellar space where it's empty, there's no gravity, and we were to do that on our planet, the object that's it stationary and having no effect on it, any force applied to it would cause it to move and keep on moving the same as if it were an interstellar space. The reason for this is that gravity and energy inside matter attract each other and therefore cause a friction and any acceleration to the object is immediately slowed down due to gravity. How much it slows down is the amount of weight the object has. What I'm saying is the weight of an object implies the amount of gravity, the force of gravity implied on the object. If we were to take away gravity and have, and have the object residing there stationary in effect acting on the object would immediately cause it to slow down. This is why theory of relativity has developed what was called the light constant. The light constant meaning the fastest anything can go that has a mass due to gravity. But what Einstein does not imply is the effect of gravity and the amount of speed that has to be used to accelerate too close to the speed of light compared with the amount of gravity acting on the object itself. And this is where a faster than light speed space travel intervenes. Interstellar space is empty of this. An object in space, the same as the object I explained on, on the planet's surface, is absent in, uh, gravity. Therefore, its energy is elusive centered to itself, whatever that object is. There's everything that holds it together. Meaning that there's no gravity acting on it, the object can travel or the ship can travel to any uh, line of propulsion that is uh, applied to it. The difference in this weight contents compared to anything that's been written in, in physics today, modern physics, and uh, the research on gravity, there's no explanation of, of the difference in, in gravity states and the pull of gravity and the action between the Gra uh, gravitation and the object on, on a surface and weight. We put the object that we had on on Earth that weighed a thousand pounds, absent gravity, it floats. We take away gravity on a planet, the same thing happens. The applied force of uh, 10 miles an hour that would cause an acceleration of 10 miles an hour, this, the object would travel 10 miles an hour can continue to travel. This difference in weight due to gravity I call fabric weight. Fabric weight is means that matter at an infinitesimal level or scale is to measure the weight of the fabric, not of space, but of the object and matter itself without gravity. That is close that equals close to zero on anything anything that is made or exists as an object. 
followed up. You know, there's different levels of scales. You know, there's gas, it's much lighter, there's steam. But mainly as to solid objects, and objects of mass, without gravity. And uh, you can quote me on this. An object actually has a fabric weight of almost zero. That's about what I wanted to explain to you on this uh, part two segment of uh, the supertelic electromagnetic gravitational force technology theory. Thank you very much.